This is Twit. Next Tuesday on iOS Today, you and I will show some tips. I'll do some more with that assistive technology, show you how that works. Let's do this now, though. Let's take it apart. Kelsey Weber is here from iFixit.com. Let's find out what's inside. <laughs> Kelsey, uh, how does iFixit, by the way, sponsor of the show, how does iFixit get this phone so quickly? So we go through the same process that everybody else does. We have to pre-order it and uh, hope that the um, shipping date that we get is um, earlier, just like everybody else. But what we do do is we send half of our teardown team all the way over to Australia <laughs> to beat the international date line. But we still have to wait in line at the Apple store and we still have to you know, go through that whole process. But we do uh, go to Australia to tear wow. it down first. And then I wait for the next day and intercept our packages at UPS and then do a tear down with the video team uh, here at home. So you've done, you've taken apart two iPhone 10s so far. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. man, but you so far. We've got a few more we're going to do some parts testing and things with, but but wow. we had a successful teardown. Nothing was damaged, so we'll be able to put these things back together for See, sure. That's the good news. All right. Yeah. So were there any surprises inside? Yeah, so um, the design changes that you see on the outside um, extend to the inside as well. You were talking about the true depth camera system that brings you um, face ID. And uh, so this is. Oh, there's the um, module. Wow. Yeah, so this is the module that's hiding underneath the um, notch up at the top of the screen. And this has your dot projector and your infrared camera that reads um, all the scans of your face that it does. So this is what's hiding under there. So I wouldn't hate on the notch so much because it's bringing you some really cool tech. And and um, beneath that, or to what keeps that um, OLED, you know, the new display um, running so quickly is a uh, huge battery. So here is uh, the new battery oh, in the iPhone 10. It's two And batteries. it's a weird shape. It's two. So it's a dual cell battery. So to keep all these... Um, the screen running really fast, that A11 chip going, um, Apple had to figure out how to fit a battery that's bigger than the battery in the 8 Plus into a phone that's around this, you know, closer to the size of the 8. So they had to get pretty creative with some geometry, and that's why you see um, the two cell battery here. But um, one good thing that they did is they put adhesive strips. Um, a removable adhesive strips on the back of this battery. So if um, in the future you want to go in and do a DIY replacement of your battery, you've got some pull tabs that'll make it um, easier to remove. So is this easier to replace the battery than it would be in the iPhone 8 or previous, like the iPhone 7, recent previous iPhones? <laughs> So Apple's been um, keeping screen and um, battery replacements, at least we believe in um, easy as far as their design goes. So um, they have the same um, removable, you know, adhesive pull tabs in the eight. Um, I thought that this battery was actually easier to get out, but those pull tabs are, they're really tight. So you need to be, you need to be careful, but it's totally doable, just a few steps. Um, you can get in there and you can replace it yourself for sure. And, oh yeah. The motherboard, the logic board is also a weird shape, I guess because everything now has to fit in that tiny puzzle space. Yeah, they had to um, really make everything compact. Here's um, that logic board there. And it normally the um, the board is a whole lot longer, but what they did here is they folded it in half, um, soldered it together. So that way it fits in right next to that battery because really they needed that bigger battery and they needed to figure oh, out how that. to fit everything else yeah. in there together so that's the uh that's there unfortunately you know having this fold o folded over um logic board will make any repairs to the logic board very difficult but um but apple did do a good job putting those strips on the battery and making um the display open in a way that'll be um easier for users to go in um and remove that themselves so there's no they've got all the um cords on the back side laid out in a way that but, um, don't cause any, you know, booby traps for you to get into the phone. So there were a lot of um, repairability um, aspects that Apple did keep in mind for the new design. It almost feels time. like this is new from Apple. Like they took some, some maybe a lesson from what you guys have told them and made this more repairable than previous. Is this more repairable than the iPhone 8, for instance? So they got the same repairability score and we saw a lot of the same, you know, repairability features. And it isn't necessarily new for Apple, um, but um, we the design and the internal design actually reminds us of the original iPhone, really? which is kind of, be, yeah. So if you go, we've got it on the teardown. We do a side-by-side -side comparison of this logic board compared to the original one, and they look very similar. And we also saw some of the um, design elements on 
on the iPhone 10, the curved edge, the metal frame that reminded us of the OG iPhone. So it's kind of cool to see all this, um, the design and iterations kind of come full circle for the iPhone 10. The OG is original. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> could you put the, with all those pieces, can someone put it back together? Can, can, are you, I know you guys are gonna try to put it back together, but can an mm -hmm. average person put it back together? Absolutely. So what we do, we do these teardowns and then we go back and we write repair guides for all of the you know vital components in your phone. So you can go in and you can replace the logic board, the cameras, all of these things. Once you get the display open, it's just a flick of a spudger, undo some cable connectors, carefully get those ribbon cables out. But um, I didn't have um, as hard of a time with the 10 um, as I did with the iPhone 8. So it, with our repair guides, you can go step by step all the way through and do um, most repairs yourself. Just a flick of the spudger. It's like from the flick Rocky the Horror uh, Picture Show. It's just a flick of the spudger. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's interesting what they get on that logic board though. There's the A11 Bionic chip. There's a neural engine, the M11 Motion Co processor, and for the Apple never reveals how much RAM, but you figured out there's three gigs of RAM on there. Yeah, so we, we work um, with a few other collaborators to come together and do this chip ID. And we also depend on our repair community. So when this teardown goes live, if um, you're into chip ID or you have some um, piece of information about what might be on these logic boards, you can go into the guide and comment and let us know, send us an email and um, give us a source and we'll integrate all those um, comments and feedback into the guide. That's kind of one of the cool things about iFixit is that all the repair guides are wiki based. And um, so you can go in, add comments and help edit to make these um, guides and teardowns better. So normally uh, you would look at the chip and there'd be numbers on it, but that, that those mm -hmm. aren't always telling you what's in there, right? No, and, and sometimes, I mean, you, you look, you can find a, you zoom in, look at the number, try to type it in or look it up, and the knowledge just isn't out there. So, uh, um, but thankfully we collaborate um, with Chipworks and some of these other companies that work with us um, to share knowledge and uh, get, get everything identified. I really, that's one of the things I love about these teardowns is really, because Apple, is pretty secretive about what they're doing. It's one of the reasons they obfuscate the numbers or use strange part numbers. But you guys always seem to figure out what's in there. And I, for one, like to know how much RAM's in there. Apple says, oh, you don't need to know that, but I wanna know. So yeah. three gigs of RAM, uh, you know, there are now Android phones, the new Razer phone has eight gigabytes of RAM, but the way iOS works, three gigs is plenty. That's a lot of RAM. Yeah. Um, Fix it score, your iFixit repairability score. What do you give it? It's from yes. a zero to nine. Zero nine to is ten. Ten, ten yeah. is ultimately repairable. Zero is throw it out when it's done. I think yep. the the Air, AirPods got a one. They were barely, barely yeah. fixable. And the essential phone got a zero. Didn't the essential phone get a zero? Um, yeah, so the, but I think the AirPods also got a zero, zero? as well. Zero? Okay, yeah. all right. Because, I mean, there's really no way to get in there and service yeah. it without breaking yeah. it. But also, you know, this, that's a tiny device. It's kind of, it's hard to make those um, repairable, although it's possible. So zero is pretty low. How did the iPhone 10 do? So the iPhone 10 got a six out of a six That's out of ten. That's pretty good. It is. It's pretty good, right on par with the iPhone 8. You know, again, we got those battery pull tabs, um, an easier opening procedure, so you don't um, screw up any cables when you go to replace the screen. But on the downside, um, that glass back, although it brings us um, wireless charging, uh, if you break that the back panel, you have to go through and completely, you know, take apart the phone in order to to access that back panel. So here's what it looks like completely disassembled. That's the back, um, that would be the back part. That you yeah, you've got your Qi wireless wow. um, here, and then this is the back glass that you'd then need wow. to you know, remove the bezel to get so, the So that's the why off. Apple says if you break the back, it's $500. Yeah, any um, repairs outside of the screen, 560 bucks to get in wow. there and replace it. So, I mean, get insurance, protect yourself. But um, <laughs> if you are out of warranty at any point, then check our website because we'll have all the guides on how to do that. <laughs> and by the way, uh, in the previous thumb, uh, fingerprint, uh, uh, screens, the Touch ID screens, there was a big issue about fixing the screen because it would make the Touch ID on secure enclave less secure. Apple was disabling Touch ID if you had a third party replace the screens. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have that problem. No, but what we are going to go and investigate is like, say you, you crack your screen and you go in and you don't want to go to Apple Service Bird or you want to go somewhere else to get um, a replacement screen. You know, what does that mean as far as your face ID technology mm. goes? Do you have to replace your entire, uh, you know, camera system? What, um, what needs to be done? Because before, if you cracked your screen, um, you would have to keep your original home button um, in order to keep um, access through um, Touch ID. Right. So we're going to be going through and doing parts testing to see... Um, 
um, what the implications of that are moving forward. It does look like it'd probably be a good idea to get Apple Care Plus. I never do. I self-insure, which means I'll be looking up how to fix it on <laughs> ifixit.com. So you, we should say that you're going to put it back together, but we don't recommend people just taking it apart to put it back together because then it wouldn't be waterproof anymore. And also yeah, so. We've got to fight through some adhesives, but the adhesives are there for waterproofing. So if if your phone isn't broken, isn't acting up, or even like if you have a you know a cracked screen and the or the crack is just in the corner and it's like just cosmetic, just live with it. You know, don't try to fix something that's not broken because yeah, you um, would be removing the waterproofing and things like that. And get a case. Yes, <laughs> for sure, get a case. And don't drop it. And really try not to drop it, even though <laughs> try it's, not to. it's slippery. <laughs> Try not to drop it. Hey, it was really great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us again. Kelsey Weber from iFixit.com. Uh, the kings of repairability, the repair guides to the world. We're really glad to have you on the show. Thanks, Kelsey. Thanks for having me. Bye.